Hello, my name's Anam Zafar and I translate from Arabic and French to English. I'm based in the UK. And today I want to read for you part of my translation of a Palestinian novel for 10 to 14 year olds. In English, it's called Me, My Friend and the Donkey. And the original Arabic title is Ana wa Sadiqi wal Himar. It's by Mahmoud Shoker, who's a Palestinian writer. He's award winning and is beloved and very well known to adults and children all across the Arab world. So Me, My Friend and the Donkey is centred on two best friends. And one of the friends has a pet donkey, which he loves more than anything else in the world. But at the beginning of the book, it gets stolen. So throughout the book, the two friends are trying to find the donkey and work out where it is and who stole it and why. And it's actually based on a true story um, of something that happened to the author himself and his best friend. So you'll notice that one of the characters who is the narrator of the story is called Mahmoud, the same as the author's name. So I'll now read to you a bit of my translation and I hope you enjoy it. Even though we'd all agreed to stick to the plan, I sometimes got a little carried away with being a detective. Once a man came to the market with a mule he wanted to sell. I started inspecting it, feeling its neck and ears. Muhammad raised an eyebrow. We're looking for my skinny donkey. So what's the point of inspecting this mule that's not skinny? He whispered. This man sells animals. Maybe he knows something about your donkey, I replied, walking up to him. Do you have a donkey for sale? I asked him. Me and my friend want to buy a white one, I added. The man scowled at us. This mule is all I have and it's better than ten donkeys. As we walked away, Muhammad told me not to get distracted so easily. We went back to inspecting the faces of people passing by, acting like detectives from spy movies. Then Muhammad, feeling reckless, made the same mistake he got mad at me for. He went up to a man who he thought was the pesky thief in disguise. Are you here to buy a donkey? Or maybe to trick someone and steal theirs? Muhammad asked. Who do you think you are asking me something like that? He said, shooting an angry look at Muhammad. I tried to calm the man down. We're very sorry. My friend thought you were the thief who stole his donkey. Yes, please don't be angry, sir, Muhammad added. But on a secret mission, so terrifying it would turn your head grey if we told you about it. The man eyed us warily, thinking over Muhammad's explanation. I accept your apology, he eventually replied. The real reason I'm here, gentlemen, is to buy some sheep so my children can have something nice to eat for Eid. Then he left, glancing back at us over his shoulder. Me and my friend exchanged glances. In that look, we told each other that even though we'd made a few mistakes, our mission was progressing well. One morning, Muhammad told me he got out of bed the night before and walked outside to the pen where he used to keep his donkey. He found it standing there, swishing its tail back and forth. He came up to me and I stroked his neck, he said. I thought he'd be happy to see me, but he didn't move his head and tail in the way he usually does when he's happy. Then he disappeared all of a sudden, right before my eyes. I looked around and saw Rahaf in the distance, looking sad and surprised and shaking her head. She must have been there the whole time. My mind won't rest until we find your donkey, I said in reply. I almost told Rahaf about our plan, but then I decided not to, he continued. I was scared she wouldn't like it and would talk us out of it somehow. And when I walked towards her, she disappeared too. Then my sister Amina woke up, came outside and asked me, why are you outside? Why aren't you in bed? I didn't say anything because I was so confused. I felt like I was taking a test at school and I didn't know the answers and nobody except me was taking the test. I had no idea if what had just happened was real or only in my imagination. Then Amina grabbed my hand and we went back inside. A few weeks later, me and my friend Muhammad had the plan well underway. We were working on the investigation as hard as we could, inspecting a whole bunch of donkeys, mules, horses, questioning all kinds of men and looking everywhere we could think of but we still hadn't found the donkey. One day, the produce dealer told us she couldn't complete her mission. She looked sorry and explained that her eyes were tired out from studying all the people and donkeys passing through the market. We respected her decision. Don't worry, we can still count on Layla and the others, we said, after thanking her for working with us. Just about two hours before sunset, Ocean Whale came running up to us. We noticed he was completely worn out from running so fast. If only we could have used a carrier pigeon instead. We'd really hoped to use one to send news to each other, but when we realised nobody used birds to communicate any more, we didn't dwell on the idea for long. Oceanwell had come to tell us that he, Lightning Bolt and Forest Lion, had captured a man with a dark birthmark on his face, just like the thief's. It wasn't above his right eyebrow, but they decided the birthmark in itself was enough proof. As we listened, 
me and my friend Muhammad looked around the Friday market. There was no one around except a few cattle sellers. We asked Ocean Whale how they'd managed to capture the man. We were following him and he seemed suspicious of us, so we got closer and surrounded him and Forest Lion said, Would you like to introduce yourself? And the man scowled and said, What do you want from me? After seeing pure evil in the man's eyes, Forest Lion decided to play a trick on him and said, I, Forest Lion, mean you no harm. I'm simply inviting you for a drink at the coffee shop. Ocean Whale went on. Then the man followed us to the coffee shop, and when we got there, Forest Lion whispered in my ear to come and find you straight away. Three of us sprinted along the pavement to the coffee shop. To my friend Muhammad's surprise, that man was not the thief. Muhammad apologised and let him finish his drink. The man accepted the apology, thanked Forest Lion for the coffee and left, seeming happy and quite relieved. We looked at each other awkwardly, then we left too. Layla was standing at the market entrance, camera in hand. She wouldn't let any donkey walk past without getting at least one shot of the animal and its owner. Glancing at her, Forest Lion said, That was just our first try. Lots more will follow. There was a proud swagger in his step, as if he was now a seasoned detective. Yeah, all you need now is to open your own prison for all the people you'll capture, we said jokingly. Forest Lion nodded with determination. It seemed lo lightning bolt and Ocean Well believed in what he'd said too. Me and, my, me and my friend Muhammad exchanged a look. We weren't convinced. Then we decided to split up and go home before sunset. And that is what we did. The next morning, on our way to school, Muhammad told me about the strange dream he'd had the night before. In the dream, we were going to Alhambra Cinema with Rahaf and Ferdia. We were excited because it was a Jeff Chandler movie. We'd already seen a few clips and couldn't wait to watch the whole thing. So one night, when it started playing, the four of us went to see it. Then the surprise, the part that confused me the most. I saw my donkey coming toward me. He asked if he could come with us to the movie. I said, how can you be here? A thief stole you, didn't he? He said, that's true, but when night falls, I can go wherever I please, near and far. That really cheered me up and I hugged him, but I told him I was worried the ticket collector wouldn't let him in. What he said next confused me even more. He told me he was a Jeff Chandler fan too, and that he just had to watch him beating the bad guys. So I promised I'd make a deal with the ticket collector. The next strange thing is that the ticket collector was happy to see him. He even said it was no problem. The cinema had seats especially for donkeys. I was amazed. Then all of us, even the donkey, walked into the movie theatre. I was amazed too. Your dream is a good omen, I told my friend Muhammad. We'll find the donkey. I can feel it. Let's hope so, my friend said. God knows it's all I want. Our sixth meeting was held one afternoon in Forest Lion's house. As usual, his mother brought us cups of sweet sugary tea. After thanking her, we waited for her to leave so we could continue the meeting. But she stayed standing there, quietly watching us. Eventually, she spoke. You're all going after this poor thief and forgetting who the real crooks are. Her word surprised us. We fired question after question at her. Who were the real crooks? How did we go after them? How would we know who they were? You'll understand when you're older, she said. How do you know the man who took the donkey is poor? We asked. Oh, so you think he's rich, she replied sarcastically. Maybe his children were hungry. So because his children were hungry, that makes it okay, Muhammad asked. No, she said, but a hungry man is an angry man. You need to understand that. She threw her words at us and left. They fluttered around the room like a flock of pigeons. We stared at each other. The way we felt, we couldn't continue the meeting. Don't worry about her, said Forius Lion, shaking us out of our thoughts. She only said that because she's mad at me. Why is she mad at you? I got a bad grade in the math test. We told him how sorry we were, and then we went back to the meeting. But we couldn't shift the feeling that this mysterious world was full of paradoxes. Thank you for listening.